Hello and welcome. Today is a special. We are going to talk about our water system. The water system is the system in the car we thought about the longest because we really wanted to have it perfect. At the first build we had small water tanks that were portable and it was working but it was never great. As we did a new build we wanted to have a water system that's integrated in the car and we had several points that were important for us. A. We wanted to have a water tank. It should be inside the cabin even if it takes space but we wanted to go to cold climates and we didn't want that our water tank freezes. It should be centered in the car so the weight is distributed and it should be as low as possible. That's all things we achieve with this system. Another important part was we didn't want to deal with portable water tanks anymore and we wanted to fill the system from the outside to not like get a hose inside the car and make a mess. It was important that water stays out of the car and the inside stays dry. That's why we went with an external water filling point. That adds complexity to the system, but it's, it's really great in the long run. Our water system contains of three main components. We have our main 50 liter water tank that feeds all the outlets. Then we have a 18 liter jerry can that includes a filter, which is for our drinking water. And we have on the outside of the car, our shower. We have the one inlet where we fill our water, you can connect fittings to it uh, to plug in some hoses. And we have two outlets. One is inside the car with a sink and a drain that goes out of the car. And one is on the outside because we mainly cook on the sandboards. So we want to have water where we're cooking. Our main water outlet is this one here. We have a small switch here to turn on the pump. We use that because we always cook here on the sandboard so you can fill pots or like clean your hands. Even without pump to save some water, it's working with gravity. So if you put it down below the tank, it will work. That's our secondary outlet. We don't use it that often only when it's really cold, raining and so. The tap has an electrical switch inside which turns on the pump and uh, we needed a second valve down here cause the valve inside the tap, cause it's like a cheap camping one, is not that great and started leaking. And you can fold it down, which was really important cause the bed comes down. That's why we went with the camping ones. I would like to have like a normal kitchen tap but it would not fit here. That's why we went with the camping one, even if we knew the quality of them is not too great. We chose the smallest sink we could find, especially one that's not as deep. We normally don't clean dishes here, but it was important for us that we can use the space underneath for all our kitchen equipment. So it was crucial that the sink is not too deep and we lose too much space here. Mm -hmm. On the countertop, we put the sink really far to the right, uh, even if you cannot stand here properly. But we thought the other countertop is way more valuable. And you don't want to have a sink here where you can work all the time standing up, because most of the time you use the sink for like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and then you're done. Bending over to reach the sink is not that big of a deal, that's why we put it so far to the front. And also it's on top of the water tank, so the length of the water lines are minimal. For several reasons, we went without gray water tank. We use only biodegradable products. That's why we thought like having a gray water tank and especially being in remote places for a long time would mean we need a big, big gray water tank and um, we A, don't have the space, and B, most of the time we are using like the water outside. So that's why we thought we don't need a gray water tank. 
and so far I think it's it's working okay and this is why we just have a hose that goes outside of the car and uh, drains the water underneath the car. In terms of water tank we went with a 50 liter water tank that fits in one of our furnitures. In the water tank it's really important that you put holes only in the top of the water tank. Even if the water tank comes with like an outlet, I would never open this. Because even if something breaks, if one of those connectors uh, starts leaking, you don't have it at the bottom of the tank and you don't have the chance of 50 liters of water leaking into your car. It just maybe something splashes up and three or four drops come out here but not more than that. That's why only put holes in the top. You need three holes basically in the tank. One as a feeder, that's most of the time the biggest because you just gravity feed the tank. Then one as a breather, you need to remove the air when you put water into the tank or you need to let air into the tank when you pull water out with the pump. And that's the third one where the water goes out of the tank uh, into your water system. In terms of pumps, we have a small submergible 12 volt pump. Uh, I first wanted to fit like a big one, a show floor or so, that make two or three bar pressure, but we decided against it for two reasons. A, it's way too big, B, it's way too expensive, and the small one works great as well. And we don't need the pressure in general because we don't have a water filter connected to our water system. We have an external water filter, um, therefore we don't need a big pump. It's also good to have a big opening for the tank. So like we did right now, you can reach into the tank and clean it or fit the pumps. And so it's way easier if it has a big opening. That's basically the tank platform where the 50 liter water tank is sitting on. It's hold down with the two straps and those four screws here, they're screwed directly into the floor of uh, the build and then the floor is attached here in the front. So that's how we hold the big tank with the big weight in the car. Works pretty well, it's not moving. Something really important for us was that the tank is in the center of the car and still we can take the tank in and out easily. That was quite a challenge to build this furniture in a way that we can remove the tank um, while it's built into the car. But yeah, we manage it with the special door. And yeah, it works great. We did marks here at the tank just to have a rough guesstimate how much water we have in the tank so we can just open it and see where is the water line. That helps a lot in planning when to take water. As connectors we used UniQuick. It's really not the cheapest system but I like the fact that you can connect them and disconnect them and connect them again without having to fear leaks. They guarantee that uh, they are leak free and also what's really important is that they are freeze resistant. So if you park your car and you go hiking a couple of days and um, it gets too cold in the car, those will not burst and you will not have water in the car. We are not sponsored by them, but I really think it's a good system that I would recommend. To disconnect them, you just pull that safety clip, then push them in, and then you can easily disconnect them. And to put them together, you just push them until you feel a resistance. Put the safety clip in and they're safe. We never had a leak. That's how we fill it. We have the connector here that has a Gardena outlet. And then we have three hoses. And some, and some uh, multiple connectors to fit off all kinds of threads. So we can take water from any well, any outlet, 
and put it inside the car. Due to the fact that we don't have like a pre-filter or anything, we also don't need uh, excess pressure and we can also do it with a uh, fossil here. Just fill it gravity fed from the top. We did that several times when we take water from small creeks or so in the Alps or in uh, the Caucasus where we can rely on the waters clean. And that's the sign that it's full. The second part of our water system is the Lifesaver jerry can. We didn't go with a filter system for our main water tank for several reasons. Cause A, we didn't want to filter all the water. We use quite a bit of water to wash our hands, to cook, to clean things. That's all water you don't need to filter. So you really want to only filter the water that you drink. A second tap would also be difficult and for far most the reason why we went with an external filter is that the pumps, the pressurized pumps and the big water filter systems for 4x4s or motorhomes are really expensive and the lifespan of a filter is not that great. That's why we decided to go with an external filter. The Lifesaver jerry can can filter 10,000 liters, which we calculated would be enough for two to three years traveling without changing the main filter cartridge. We only need to change the small charcoal filters, which we do every month. Another plus at the Lifesaver jerry can is that we increase the capacity of water we can carry by the 18 liters that it holds. Uh, we can fill our bottles while driving. With a second tap up here, we always would need to open the roof to fill our water bottles, and that was not an option. One part we struggle a little bit with is we experienced some leaks at the main valve of the Lifesaver, but we are in contact with them. They're really, really responsive and uh, they're taking it serious to fix the issue. We said up front that we don't want to deal with canisters. That is um, it's still a canister, but um, we can leave it here in the car. It's always fixed. And how do we fill it is we just open it here in the front and we take the hose that's at the door here. We just fill it with the hose out of our main tank most of the time while we're filling the main tank at the same time. So yes, we need to deal a little bit with water inside the car, but it was never an issue. So um, we made that exception. The third part of our water system is our shower. It roughly holds 25 liters, which is enough to have four times a shower. We can either fill it here in the front or in the back. It was originally designed to be pressurized with the compressor, but we keep on losing the lids in the back, so we cannot pressurize it anymore, but now we're having a small inline pump that works as great as the pressure system. We had to rebuild the shower in Saudi, because our old one exploded, basically, as we pressurized it. It was several years old and uh, the, the quality of the tubes was not that great. In general, if you want to build a shower yourself, you need to take care that you have tubes or that you can buy tubes that you can glue together. The German system that you just stick together and they have rubber seals inside, it will not work because they will separate with time. So check in the countries around or check in the internet if you can find uh, PVC pipes that you can glue together those will do the job. That's basically our shower system. We have one piece of hose with the inline pump. We have a second hose and then the, the shower brush. We have a valve here so we can turn it off and we don't lose any water. And the 12 volt inline pump is just connected to the cigarette lighter and therefore We can shower.
One highlight of our water system is our heat exchanger that is in the engine bay. So we can have a nice warm shower, which I use almost every time because I really don't like cold showers. It's an extra bonus. But uh, to explain how that works, we will do another breakout video to show you in detail how the heat exchanger works, how it's wired in the engine. So um, that's for the next time. To wrap it up, I have to say we're really happy with the water system we built. It's well integrated in the car. It's using the space to the max. We don't have any hassle to deal with water inside the car and we didn't have any leaks at pipes or so. So that's really, really great. The 50 liters that we have in the car last us depends what we do like three to six days that's already a big improvement over the two small 10 liter water tanks that we had in the past in general i would probably do it in the same way in the future and we can highly recommend to first think about your system and then build your interior around your water system let us know in the comments what you think about our system, what you would do different, or what's your experience about your water systems. Until then, see ya.